I think he is hurting his son. He's clearly already hurt his son in the pocket because um, he could have made about two to three million a year for about a four or five year deal before bouncing the basketball. And then he could have, you know, just just went from that and then he could have gone independent at a later date or whatever the case may be. I don't like his strategy at all. Uh, but let's take into account what he's trying to do here and let's understand it for what it is. Uh, LeVar Ball is trying to be independent, whether it's the Jordan brand, whether it's LeBron James, whether it's the Black Mamba, Kobe Bryant, or a slew of others. Ultimately, they're associated and affiliated with Nike. So ownership of their own brand outside of Jordan and to some degree, I don't understand the nuances. I've never really looked into the nuances of the Jordan deal. In the end, what it comes down to is that they're married to Nike. And so you don't have independence. Um, in the case of LeVar Ball, you can admire what he's doing from the perspective of his pursuit of being completely independent and not having to, to answer to anybody else, which is why he pursued the co-branding uh, relationship with one of the big three, Adidas, Nike, uh, you know, Under Armour. The problem with it is that his son is an unproven commodity. What you did at UCLA doesn't necessarily translate into what you're going to do on the NBA level. He's placing a level of belief in his sons, and that's in his son Lonzo, rather. That's to be admired. The problem is belief is one thing. Factual evidence to validate what he brings to the table, particularly on the NBA level, remains to be seen. It's almost like LeVar is wheeling the cart before the horse and expecting and anticipating that, excuse me, we deserve this now because this is what we're going to do. He's betting on his son, but in the process, I don't think he's smart in the manner in which he's going about it because, again, you know, everybody answers to somebody. I say this often, Max. You go to school to get an education. You know, you get an education to get a good career. You're looking for a good career so you can make good money. LeVar Ball clearly intends to bypass as many layers as he possibly can, and there's no harm in that because a lot of people have attempted to do such things. The problem is it has to be sensible. And I don't think at this particular moment in time, it appears to be in terms of the price of the shoes. And then to come out with a tweet saying, if you can't afford it, you're not a big baller. It harkens me back to what Shaquille O'Neal tweeted yesterday, you know, talking about, and I'm paraphrasing here because I don't have the tweet in front of me, but to paraphrase, he essentially said, big ballers don't, you know, you know, out, you know, out, I don't know what the, what the word he used, but, uh, you know, sell out, uh, overpriced shoes to kids. And, you know, Michael Jordan and others, may, some would argue they may have done that, but this is to the extreme. And to come out with a tweet saying to folks that you're not a big baller, if you can't afford it, you've done alienated more than 90% of the population because you basically said to them, you ain't worth a damn because you can't afford my shoe. That's not exactly the way to ingratiate yourself to potential patrons that you want to buy your product. It's just not a smart, smart thing that he did. I don't like the way he's handling it at all. And I think ultimately a lot of folks are not going to like it either. And they're going to take it out on his son because they can't necessarily take it out on him. That's my fear.